the next topic that we want to talk about is work. There's a very large variety of problems involving this idea. I'm going to concentrate on three of them. One of them is Hooke's Law, one of them's Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, and the third will be the work done by an expanding gas. In previous courses, you may have had an idea that if you move an object a certain distance, say from point P to point Q, using some force that points along the direction from P to Q, the work done is the force multiplied by the distance from P to Q. We'll measure these kind of units in foot pounds or joules or British thermal units or some other units. Ordinarily, we won't be too concerned about the units here. This sort of idea is based around the assumptions that firstly, the force is a constant throughout the motion, and secondly, the force is parallel to the straight line that passes between P and Q. For now, we will maintain the second assumption, but the first one is going to get dropped. Hooke's law has to do with springs. A spring has a certain natural or equilibrium length. This is the length of the spring when no additional force is applied to it. Hooke's law says the force needed to stretch a spring from its natural length by an amount x is given by f equals k times x, where k is a constant for a given spring. Naturally, we'll call it the spring constant. So if I have a spring at its natural length, I'm going to say that it is displaced zero amount from its natural length. And if I stretch it some amount beyond its natural length, I'll call the amount that I stretch it x. And here I'm thinking particularly of starting with x equals zero with the spring in its equilibrium position. And I'm going to stretch it until it's b units longer than that. When x is very small, the force given by k times x is also very small. Later, when x is larger, k times x could be large as well. So this is a situation where the force is not a constant force. So I'm going to imagine dividing the stretched part of the spring, the displacement of it, starting at x equals zero, ending at x equals b, into many, many small subintervals. I'm thinking of taking one of them and magnifying it. Its vertical length is going to be called delta x number i. We're going to chop the thing up into such fine pieces that the force on that one little subinterval can more or less be treated as though it were a constant. So this is going to be force that goes with x number i, where x is some x value within the subinterval number i. The work done over this chunk number i then is approximately going to equal force on chunk number i multiplied by how big chunk number i is. The total work is the sum of all of those estimates, roughly speaking, and to get the exact value of the work, we take the limit of these Riemann sums as all of the delta xi's tend to zero. If you've been following along, you recognize what we're going to do here. It's going to turn out to be a general fact that the work that we need to do is an integral of the force. This is true for all sorts of forces. In particular, it's true for Hooke's law. For example, a force of 10 pounds is needed to stretch a spring three feet. How much work is done? A common mistake that people will make is to say, 
all right, you've got 10 pounds of force and three pounds of distance, 10 times three is 30. So the answer is 30 foot pounds, but that's wrong. Early on, the force, which is some constant times X is very small. Late in the game, towards the end of the displacement, the force is the 10 pounds, but it's not a constant force. The right way to think about this is to say, we know Hooke's law. Hooke's law says force is a constant times displacement. And we've been told that when the force is 10 pounds, the displacement from natural length is three. So F is 10 when X is three. That tells me that the constant K is 10 over three. What that tells me is, the specific force law for this particular spring is force is 10 thirds times X. If you imagine that X is very small, then 10 thirds times that will be very small. And it costs you almost no effort to stretch the spring. If X is close to three though, the force will be close to 10. So the amount of work that has to get done. We started at zero displacement from natural length. We ended up at three feet from natural length. Over that range of X values, I have to integrate the force. I have to integrate 10 thirds times X with respect to X. This is an easy integral to do. When the dust finally settles, it turns out that to do what was described, I need to supply 15 foot-pounds of work, also known as energy. Notice that 15 is smaller than 30, which makes sense because for most of the displacement, the force will be less than 10. If you didn't start from the natural length, if you started from some displacement from equilibrium at x equal a and ended at x equal b, the argument to calculate the amount of work needed is exactly the same as what we've done before. The only thing that changes are the limits of integration. I have to put in all of the relevant x values so instead of starting at zero and going up to B, I'll start at whatever my initial displacement was, and I'll go up to the ending displacement. Generally speaking, for springs and not anything else, the work being an integral from A to B of K times X with respect to X, has an antiderivative one half k times x squared. Those of you who know some physics will recognize that as the potential energy of a harmonic oscillator. If you don't know about that stuff, don't worry because it doesn't matter. The work needed is one half k b squared minus one half k a squared. I'm going to break the discussion of work up into three very short videos. This is the first one, work one, Hooke's law. The next one will be Newton's law of gravitation. After that will be work done by an expanding gas. I think that'll be enough to illustrate the principle of how to calculate work. I hope everyone's doing well, and I'll talk to you soon.